Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. It seems that this is the news of the day. The one more orbit attempt at a world record transpolar circumnavigation of the Earth. They're actually up in the air now, having launched just under 31 and a half hours ago. Right now they're over Antarctica. I think a lot of people are probably going to be talking about this flight, especially in the flat earth community and in the debunking community. And one of the things that I wanted to do to be just a little bit different is rather than talk about the flight, let's talk about some of the technology involved in the flight. For example, they've got a live stream going, monitoring the entire flight. We're not getting it all the time. I wonder why that is. Let's explore that a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started, and we'll have a look at uh, the One More Orbit flight. One More Orbit is a record-setting attempt that will launch from the shuttle landing strip, very near where these gentlemen, the crew of Apollo 11, launched for the moon exactly to the minute 50 years earlier. It is a non-governmental, multinational effort sponsored by private industry to set a world record. Well, guys, let's go ahead and start off with first things first. This is the path that the flight is taking. They flew into the Kennedy Space Center, which is KTSS on this uh, globe. They started this journey about 32 hours ago, and their first stop was to fly over the pole along this magenta line. And then the second leg came around over the pole down to UACC. Now, this is in Kazakhstan. This is actually near where they launched some of the, the Russian rockets. And then they flew down to FIMP, which is off the coast of Madagascar. And currently, they're heading down to the South Pole, as you can see here. The flight from FIMP to southern Chile is their next leg. Then they're going to fly up through South America. Back to the Kennedy Space Center. Now the total flight distance on this is going to be 21,706 miles according to my calculation. Theirs is slightly different because this is not an exact route, but it's very close to what they're actually taking. You know, there's no way to really be able to tell what they planned for on the loop that passes over the poles because that actually takes them out of the way on a great circle course. Now, for no reason other than the fact this is one of the cooler maps that I've ever seen, this also traces out the flight route. As you see, they start down in Florida at about the 8 o'clock position. They go up over the North Pole into Kazakhstan. Then they go down and land just to the west of, uh, excuse me, just to the east of Madagascar. They cross the South Pole. They make landfall at the southern coast of Chile. They fly up. South and Central America and come back to Florida. I think that lays it out pretty nicely. Now the aircraft they're using is this Gulfstream 650 ER. It's chosen because it's got a high cruising speed and it's got a 7,500 nautical mile range. This means that there are fewer refueling stops and more importantly is the time it takes to service this aircraft is 30 to 45 minutes compared to an hour to many other business jets. That way they can get some gas and go, which is what you need to do when you're trying for a speed record. Finally, let's have a look at the people that are actually trying this feat. They represent eight different countries. There's an astronaut, a cosmonaut, four pilots, a flight attendant, and a mission control specialist on the ground. So this is quite a crew they have. Now, tracking of this flight will be internal via GPS. That means the GPS receiver is carried on the aircraft and will monitor the flight throughout the duration from Kennedy Space Center all the way around the world back to Kennedy Space Center. That's the documentation of the location of the flight. What's unique about this particular flight is that they are going to be live streaming during much of it. SATCOM Direct is providing the satellite link, and this is their coverage map. As you can see, they really do hit most of the world. However, the poles don't have very good coverage at all. As a result, 
as the aircraft flies down towards the poles, it will lose the ability to live stream until it comes into an area of coverage again. That has to do with the location of the satellites and their ability to see the aircraft. Now the take home message from this shot is even though we don't have the bandwidth required for live streaming, position reports can still be transmitted to some of these satellites on occasion and they are keeping very close tabs on where the aircraft is located. As you can see, they're coming up on the Antarctic Peninsula on the way to Chile. They've already passed the South Pole. As this is a world record attempt, they are keeping very close tabs on the location to make sure that no shortcuts are being taken. Furthermore, they're actually filming a documentary of this trip as the trip is taking place, further documenting their positions and what they're doing and where they are. Now, when people run a long distance race like the Boston Marathon or the London Marathon, there are a series of checkpoints that they have to pass along the route. The time they pass those checkpoints is noted, and then they can do split times on the segment of the course between two checkpoints. If you are running six and a half minute miles during most of the marathon, but there's a checkpoint that you ran a five minute mile, they can sit down and they can investigate that and see whether or not you deviated from the course because they're suspicious that you did because you suddenly, for no other reason, cut a minute and a half off of your time. The same thing can be done with this aircraft. As the aircraft leaves coverage for the live stream, we know the time and we know its location. When it emerges out of that shadow and starts live streaming again, again, we know the time and the location. We know the speed of the aircraft, so it's a simple matter to determine how much they could have traveled in that time that they were out of contact with the live stream. Was that enough time to make it to the pole? Did they come out at an appropriate time had they gone to the pole? This is a way that we can actually check this in live time. You just need the times. What's more, we have the GPS data that is being recorded continuously. Does it match up to when the when the live stream cut out and when it came back in, where they where they were supposed to be according to the GPS? So if you're going to say that they weren't being live streamed when they were at the North and the South Pole, that's a fine assertion to make. However, you have to show that they couldn't have been there because the GPS data will say that they're there. The Times will say that they were there. It's up to you to figure out how they couldn't have been there. And quite frankly, if they had time to do it and the GPS said they did it, chances are they did it and you have quite a tough road to hoe. But the bottom line is, it's your road to hoe. It's not anybody's road to hoe to try and prove they actually did it. You have to prove that they didn't because the data will say that they did it. Now, furthermore, this entire trip, because it's a world record attempt, is being monitored by an outside, independent third party that has to certify the results in order for the world record to be set. So you have to overcome their documentation as well. Now, as we speak, this aircraft is approaching Chile uh, for a scheduled stop. You can watch it live. I hope you have an opportunity to log on to their website and just click the uh, YouTube button and watch it. The live stream's up and running. So this is history in the making. I hope you had a chance to look at it. Signing out from Northern Michigan, this is Bob the Science Guy. I hope you enjoy this moment. Hey, before you leave, reach down and hit that little like and subscribe button. I think we're going to be talking about this some more in the next few days, and you don't want to miss out on anything. Make sure you hit that little bell icon as well. Take care, guys. We'll talk again soon. Hang around for a few minutes after the outro and meet the crew of One More Orbit. Take care, guys.